Welcome, everybody. Thank you for uh, watching this refresher of the Nebraska Game and Parks Butterfly Survey. Uh, my name is Cody Dreyer. I'm the pollinator ecologist for Nebraska Game and Parks, and we are going to kind of fly through everything today. Um, just This is just the refresher of things that uh, we have already learned during either the Zoom training that is currently on YouTube. Um, I'm going to be referring back to that quite a bit or the in-person trainings that started in 2022. Um, so without further ado, this survey is looking for regal fritillaries and monarch butterflies. Um, there are also viceroy butterflies out there. They have this uh, black band, but we're not looking for them. Um, don't get tripped up by the viceroys. I'm gonna have you practice estimating distances and uh, angles. After that, you can assign points to survey. We're going to have you walk a 200 meter transect looking for butterflies all along the way. <coughs> They're outside of the survey area. They do not get recorded, but the survey extends to infinity as far as you can see um, within the two points. Um, we're looking for the species, the sex, the behavior, um, the nectaring uh, species. If it's nectaring, what's it eaten on? Um, detection distance, and then the angle. On the way back, we're going to look at our two vegetation and, or five, vegetation and habitat plots, um, looking for what flowers are actively blooming in our two square meter floral assessments and um, what kind of cover estimates we get and uh, any landscape variables we might see. All the while looking for monarchs, regals, and uh, milkweed on the property. Hopping back into our butterfly ID, we have two species, the monarch, our males have this black dot with thinner veins, and the females lack that dot but have thicker veins. And our regal fritillaries. Uh, males have orange spots on their hind wing, uh, while the females have just white spots on the hind wing. Um, we have covered most of that already here, but I do want to point out the viceroy again. They have this black bar, um, which the monarchs lack. Also, they're usually quite a bit smaller. Um, I often think uh, when I see a viceroy, oh, look, there's a little baby uh, monarch. And then I remember that's not how uh, butterfly biology works. And I go, oh, yeah, that's a viceroy. Um, so we are not looking for viceroys um, for this study. Regals are um, pretty distinct from most of the other fritillaries. There are quite a few other fritillaries, but none of them have the uh, dark hind wing that you see on the regal fritillary. I do want to remind people um, there are a lot of other community science projects out there. Um, this wasn't brought up until the last couple years. We now have NebraskaLepidoptera.com. Uh, it has pictures of all 200 plus species of butterfly in the state. And we just got an update this last winter. We now have 200-ish species of moths as well. So I'd highly encourage you to check that out if you have any questions about butterflies or moths. Um, we're going to very, very briefly touch on some results, mostly to show the variation that we've seen um, in the past for these surveys. So we're just cycling through looking at variation. You can see hot spots come and go um, pretty quickly. So um, if you think you're out here to for sure see uh, butterflies on your site, that is not necessarily going to happen, um, but a zero is still important data. Oops, there we go. Um, probably the most important, uh, especially for this talk, uh, for our statistics, is the number of surveyors. We've been able to climb relatively well over the last three years. Um, we're well on our way to 60 for 2023 when this is recorded, um, and I think we will hit 50 community scientists uh, it's it's very important to see how many transects community scientists are getting compared to me. This is my job the whole summer is to get out and do these surveys and you guys uh, make it possible that this project can happen. Um, without community scientists, this would not be possible. Um, I'm hoping to pull back a little this year and to really let our community scientists shine. Um, every year there will be a uh, post-training Google form. This is how I know that you're still interested. It should be in the description of this uh, video on YouTube. 
this is how I know you want to survey. If you don't fill this out, I don't know you want to uh, still help with this project. So please look for that each year. Um, I cannot stress enough that this is the most important form that we have each year. Um, good apps to remember. Um, Google Maps, My GPS coordinates, um, Cam Scanner. Uh, I have replaced this with Adobe Scan this year. Um, Adobe Scan is free. Cam Scanner is now pay to use. So um, Adobe Scan uh, works just as well and is free. And then uh, web pages, uh, nowcoast.noaa.gov um, has really, really good graphs and maps that you should check out for your weather information. When to survey. The survey runs June 15th to August 15th. We're hoping to get two surveys on the same transect ref, roughly four weeks apart. They sh these surveys should take five to 10 minutes to walk the butterfly transect. Um, it might take you a fair amount longer to do the vegetation and habitat information, but the butterfly walk should be roughly five to 10 minutes. Uh, the temperature should be over 55 degrees. The wind should be less than 12 miles an hour. Uh, we would like clouds to be less than 30%. If it's under 80 degrees, and once it gets over 80 degrees, uh, we don't really care what the temperature is. Survey time is 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Unless we get over 80 degrees, then we'll shift to 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, now, coast.noaa.gov is a great place to check the weather, especially outside of the field um, when you're planning your day on the basic Apple weather app, the one that comes standard on your phone, I just learned that if you click on the hourly forecast, it will bring you to a, um, a hourly graph. And if you click here, it will take you to basically everything that this thing can tell you. Uh, relative humidity, wind speed, cloud cover, all that is in here. Um, I just found that out, so I figured I would pass that on. We're going to take a look at our butterfly transect sheet. This is the first page. Um, we do want to include our name and number exactly and completely. Um, if you do more or less, it just makes my life hard um, come data entry. So whatever it says, if it's got WMAs or SRAs or just a name and a number, uh, whatever it is, Please write that down exactly. Um, next, we'll do your name, your email, survey date, um, our habitat or our weather information, um, remembering the rules that we have for when we're going out to survey. Did we attend a training? Yes, you're watching this. Um, I am a biologist. If you are not paid to do this work, you are a volunteer. Uh, our last estimation practice date, this should be within two weeks of our current date because we will have went out uh, very recently to practice estimating distances. Um, on this example, I have no adjusted written down, so we're going to write down both the start and end points fully for our whole survey. First time we're getting here for the year. Um, this is possibly what you'll end up seeing when I hand out site assignments. Um, if uh, you right now we can't see what twin O means, um, but if we click on it, we can see that it's Twin Oaks WMA 13. Um, same thing for our start, lat, and long. Um, if we click on it, we can get the full thing. But if we double click on these lines, we can expand things so that all of the words and letters fits. Um, into all the boxes. So now we get all the full information um, without having to click on each cell. Um, I try to do this for you, but I know I miss it sometimes, so I do want to touch on that again. When you're entering these into your GPS device, um, usually your phone, uh, we do want to get to at least five decimal places because um, that gets us to roughly uh, uh, under a meter of sensitivity precision. Um, 
if you don't know how to use Google Maps to drop a point and get your GPS coordinates, I would highly encourage you to use uh, My GPS Coordinates app. It is very, very simple. You literally just open it up and wait until your accuracy gets within 20 feet or so, and it will tell you exactly where you are in the world. Um, and write down both the start and end points that you're using wherever you started and wherever you ended, not necessarily the numbers that I handed to you. Uh, we had this come up this year. So um, I would like everything reported to me in decimal degrees. Google Maps does give you decimal minute seconds. Um, I can work it out if you do accidentally write that down, but it is not what we're going for here. Um, decimal degrees is um, easily my most preferred method to uh, report GPS coordinates. And this is how you will receive your own GPS coordinates as well. Uh, moving on to estimating distances. Um, we have two types of distance estimation. One is uh, good to know what your own step is. Um, this is good for our habitat assessment to know what five meters out is from the center of your plot. Um, so we'll take 10 steps, uh, measure the distance where you started, divide by your number of steps, and do that multiple times. You'll be amazed um, how many different, how different your um, steps can be um, from sitting in a car for 10 minutes just to walking around for a little bit. Um, we do still have all three distance estimation areas. These will remain our equipment pickup sites and likely where we will um, get t-shirts from. Yes, we have t-shirts finally. Uh, we've been talking about it for a few years, but they are ready to be picked up. Um, this is the website where I got uh, my information for how to make the distance estimation stations. Um, we're not going to go over that here, but we uh, are going to go over how to practice just very briefly. So we stand at the spot, guess to these points. Um, then we get our correct number. We find the total difference. It doesn't matter if that is positive or negative. Uh, add all of those up. Then we divide by our total distance, uh, the actual total distance, and we get the percent that we were incorrect. As long as that is less than 10%, we want to do that twice in a row and we're good to go. Um, and we want to do this no more than two weeks ahead of any of our surveys. So I'll go out and practice at least four or five times this summer. I hope you will also find some time to get out and do some practicing. Um, we do not have strict uh, guidelines for angle estimation, but I do want you to practice that as well. Wherever you stand, um, your answer key will have a stake that we are treating as if it is our endpoint. Um, so we're treating this as our angle stake and this is our angle stake. So our first estimate to uh, A is 30, B is 6, F and C are over 90 degrees. So that butterfly is behind us. We don't count it. Um, but as we turn around, F still stays over 90 degrees, but C is now only 52 degrees. Um, so it gets counted looking this way. We're not going to count A and B here, and D gets counted um, as 20. Here is our data sheet. We've already hit the top bit pretty good, but we left where we need to start our survey. This should be the last thing you do before you look up and start walking. Um, this will be the last thing you do, so I suppose a little out of order on this, but um, hopefully we're going to see some butterflies. So we've got our species detected monarch. We have a male, it was nectaring, so we can write red clover, what it was nectaring on, our detection distance, and the angle we saw it at. So 21 meters out at about 25 degrees off of center. We have another monarch, female flying out of fair ways. Then we see a regal, um, unknown sex is basking somewhere right in front of us. And then a female monarch basking as well, um, a little off to one side. And then we would record our end right as we get to the end of our transect.
again, we're trying to keep that between five to 10 ish minutes. Um, if you have any notes, we have a pretty good section for notes. And then um, we have, was a monarch or regal seen anywhere between entering or leaving the field? Um, this includes, uh, if you saw them on the transect, they will be counted here as well. Um, but if you saw it right as you got out of your car and then didn't see any monarchs or regals for the rest of the time, you would still record that butterfly down here in this section. Um, running through a quick a uh, hypothetical survey. We start our survey and glance behind us for some reason and see a monarch. This one does not count. They need to be within the survey area. Um, get going a little ways and see a monarch. This one counts right in front of us. Perfect. Even if it's a long ways out, that still counts. It's within our survey area. We go a little farther. One just off still counts. But we get to the end and see a butterfly. Um, past the end of our transect um, does not count anymore. When we turn around to start doing our um, habitat and vegetation analysis, um, we see a butterfly. That one does not count. We are done with our survey. It is behind us. Um, although if any of these, uh, say if these were all monarchs and this was a regal, uh, this would still go under regal scene. Um, so then we would have both circled there. But it does not matter where your butterfly um, ends up, it matters where it starts. So we would record our distances from uh, wherever we were when we saw B, not when it ended up. Moving on to our walk back, our floral assessment, the top chunk of our data sheet. Um, we have our instructions up here. The first uh, left side of the page is our common species that we've seen throughout the years. Then we have areas to write in. Um, whichever plot you find these species in is where you're going to record that. We also have milkweed seen on the property. This is the very bottom of the page. In the top right corner, I would just like the site number and the date. You don't need to write in the full site name. Just the number and the date is good. This really helps with data entry. We're going to look at just a single plot this year. If you need more examples, they are in the uh, recorded YouTube videos from previous years. So we start out with our stiff sunflower um, rooted inside of our plot, so it counts. We have uh, another rose rooted in our plot. This one counts. This one would not count um, as it is rooted outside of our plot, even though it hangs into the vegetation plot. This one would not count. Since we have this one here, uh, we get to count it. Uh, we're 100% certain of these IDs, so they get written down um, and put in. We're not certain of these two species IDs, our five petal white and our seven petal white. Um, so we are, they still get counted, but they do not, um, they don't get a species name. They get an identifier. We're going to take a photo of these species, hopefully more than one photo, um, and we'll go over that in just a second. But uh, we need pictures so that I and or our uh, botanist can ID these pictures or ID these plants to species. We're not going to record any grasses we see, and we're also not going to record any non-blooming forbs. Um, even if they're close to blooming, um, the cutoff is, do you think a butterfly can eat this? If yes, um, then we'll count this as blooming. If not, uh, we will exclude it from our survey. When to take pictures. If you're not 100% sure of your ID, um, please, please, please take pictures. Um, if you don't know what the plant is, but if you know what the plant is, this is a smart weed, but you don't know if there are different species, um, take pictures. We have a lot of smartweeds and sunflowers in the state. Um, so if you just say smartweed, um, that's not as specific as we're hoping for. When you take pictures, they must be clear, not blurry. Um, please try to check them in the field. I know that can be difficult. Um, take a close up of the flower and the leaves. Um, you can take multiple pictures, that's fine. Two is almost always better than one. I'd rather have you send in five, pet, five pictures 
then one bad picture that ends with an unknown. Um, make sure you have at least the flower and the leaves um, and check your pictures in the field. So we have a nice full plant flower, nice close up, and then a couple leaf shots because I wasn't sure if I got a good one in the field. Another good photo, um, good, uh, good flower picture, nice leaf picture, and then kind of a wide shot of the habitat that we're finding it in. Uh, these are not good. Uh, we don't have any, any flowers in here, so I don't know why I even have this picture, um, but it was sent to me, and then this one has two different flowers in it, um, so be sure I know which flower you're talking about when you send in these pictures. We, there are some field guides. Um, Farrar appears to be out of print, uh, but you can still find it for quite the price. Um, the Department of Ag and Abe Books um, has these for a reasonable price still. Moving on to habitat. Um, it's kind of our middle and bottom section. We start with instructions. We're only estimating to our bins here. Um, so zero is absent, one is under 10, and then we move up as we go. We have our woody plants. Um, these are shrubs and trees that are blooming and non-blooming forbs. Uh, does it have or will have a flower? Grasses includes our rushes, um, cattails, that kind of thing. Bare ground and litter, we're looking for like quarter size chunks. Um, if it's just little tiny dots, we're not really gonna count that. Um, and same goes for water. So every one of these rows should have a bubble marked in. Um, probably should have split these up, but I didn't. Then we move to our uh, management landscape assessment. Um, we have hay mow. Uh, two tracks would fall under this as, as you're driving along, you're clipping off that vegetation. Um, that's kind of where I'm lumping that into. Uh, we have grazing, we have burning. Um, I do have an other if you find uh, something else that you feel like should be in here that didn't get covered here. So we're going to estimate our cover in these 100 square meter plots. This does... Um, this YouTube video, uh, the one on estimating, is still on YouTube. It is in our playlist. It's still great. Um, again, the opening music can be a little loud. We only need to estimate into these bins, but it can still be helpful to be as exact ex as, exact as possible. Um, plots can be more than 100%, but never less than 100%. Um, if you want to find out what one square meter chunks look like, um, I find that to be helpful. Or you can divide your plots into four 25 square meter and then average those out. Um, whatever, whatever works for you in the field, I would recommend, but I find these two uh, methods pretty useful. So we're going out five meters from the center of our veg plots in four directions, um, and that extends uh, another five meters out, um, giving us a 100 square meter uh, habitat plot. Um, each of these rows should have one bubble filled in. They should be at least 100% full, um, but uh, can very well get over 200%, especially if you have a fair amount of woody vegetation. I'm going to go over a few um, things that I've seen in the past. Uh, this is bad. We should have something in at least bare ground litter death water, um, even if it is fully uh, covered by tall trees, um, even if they're cedars, you're going to have something underneath of them. This is probably the most common plot that I see um, throughout the survey. Um, just good. Probably going to see one of these um, at some point in your summer. Uh, this is possible, but I would expect at least something in bare ground water or litter. Um, it might happen. I've probably had one or two of these, but uh, do keep in mind that we have kind of different layers um, for cover. Uh, very similar. I have had this plot happen to me, um, but same thing. I would expect something in bare ground litter or duff. I just got into some reed canary grass that was just so thick. Um, it was just reed canary grass. 
And then this, um, I also see a fair amount of, is we just don't reach 100%. So this max would be 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Um, that's not how this kind of survey should work. So please do make sure you're getting up to at least 100%. It's a good check. Um, another mistake that I see sometimes is we don't have, um, we exclude our vegetation plot or just forget to mark down. So if you have something in plot one, you should have something for blooming forbs in plot one, um, something in your floral assessment plot one, your habitat assessment should have a blooming forb of at least one. As for our um, management landscape variables, it's nice if you walk through the whole plot, uh, only record what you see in the plot. Not every row needs to fill it, be filled in, they could all be blank, and then write other on the line if you have them. The uh, last thing before we get to our final thoughts is crossing fence. Um, we have uh, I've had a couple people have trouble crossing fence, so I'm going to throw this section in as well. Um, first thing to remember is that gates are an option, but you have to leave them as you found them. So if you go through a gate that was open, you leave it open. If you go through a gate that was shut when you got there and you opened it, you have to shut it. Um, some gates are very hard to relatch, so make sure you can shut it before you open it. There are gates that I don't mess with because I'm not sure I can latch them again. Um, so I'll just crawl under or go over um, next to it. Most fences have a less tight section every 50 yards or so, um, except the rainwater basins. They know how to make fence. Um, many fences have a smooth bottom strand. Fish and wildlife in the basins are very good about uh, this as well. So um, here we can see barbed on the middle, and then both a smooth top wire, which we get very, very little of here in Nebraska, and a smooth bottom wire, um, which more agencies are going towards. Less private lands do this than agencies generally do. Um, if you search Upland Project Crossing Fence, uh, you will get more detailed instructions on this, but um, it's easier to cross with two or more people. Uh, I prefer to go over top most of the time, you can push down on the top strand to go over the top. I use a metal clipboard. Um, it is beat up because I use it like that, but it still works really well. Um, you can go through the middle. Um, you do want to kind of get flat. Um, I use a metal clipboard again there and be careful of loose clothing. You can get snagged up pretty easy. Um, it's good to take off a backpack and stick it on the other side if you take a backpack in the field. Um, rolling under is probably the safest but you might get a little wet and dirty if you do that. Um, we also have quite a bit of electric fence. I just assume all of them are hot. Most of them are not super taut, so you can push down on them without too much trouble. Uh, use a stick, don't use metal, uh, you're gonna get zapped. Um, you can roll under uh, electric fence very easily. Electric fence gates are usually very easy to open, but always return a gate to how you found it. If it was open, it stays open. If it's closed, it gets closed again. It's been a few years um, and more people are getting onto private lands now. Um, so I wanted to show you guys how to talk to landowners. Um, first thing, always be polite, introduce yourself, follow their instructions if they have any, that might save you a fair amount of time. Uh, be sure to leave gates as you find them. If they want them open, keep them open. If they're shut, keep them shut. And no is always an option. These landowners are doing us a favor by letting us onto their land. They don't have to. So if they don't want us to be on their land, that is perfectly fine. Um, I'm gonna give you enough information so that you know enough about where you're trying to go that you can describe it to the landowner. Um, some of these landowners own thousands of acres. So if you tell them, hey, I'd like to go survey for butterflies, they're not gonna have a clue where you're wanting to be. The best way to look up information on landowners is to go to GWERKS. Um, each county or almost every county in Nebraska has a GWERKS um, where you can look up people's information by county. So you need to make sure you're in the right county for them. We're gonna look at Twin Oaks Wildlife Management Area as kind of our example area. So we can zoom in just by zooming like we normally would. 
Um, I like to change uh, my maps to satellite view because working off of map view isn't great. So we just click over here and we get the, the map uh, satellite view, satellite view to see what actually is happening, happening on the landscape. So we can uh, get information about our landowners by clicking the identify tool and then clicking on the map. So that's what's happened here. I've got identify um, clicked and I clicked on the map. Um, I did click on Twin Oaks, it looks like. It's owned by Game and Parks. So we can go to the next slide and see what our area looks like. I've got our transect in there already. So we should compare these two. And these two places do not look the same, so we're not gonna go here. Um, we, we, this is not this, so we need to go back to the map and figure out what's going on. So we go back here and if we look through, we can see that tree line kind of peeking through here. So we're way down here. So we were off by over two miles um, on where we wanted to be. Um, so yeah, we'll go down here and now we'll compare those two. So we see this little tree line here. We see this, we got this horseshoe cut out, um, some sort of field in here. So yes, we are now in the right spot. We can now start looking at different landmarks to talk to our landowner about. Um, helpful things to know, uh, the closest town in the direction, two miles north of Elk Creek, closest neighbor and direction, just north of John Doe, uh, closest road, south of two or 724 Road and west of 624 Avenue. Landmarks like trees, lakes, or field, it's north of that tree line that we were seeing there. Um, some landowners like to get the legal description. You can get that from GWorks. Um, it's township range and section uh, you can tell them those numbers um, and these are all handy things that you want to keep accessible when you call up a landowner so here's what a sample call might look like i'm going to say hi my name is jim doe is this frank great I am helping Game and Parks with their butterfly survey this year, and I was assigned to survey your land. Uh, the specific area I'm looking at is south of 724 Road and west of 624 Avenue. Would it be all right if I come out a couple times this summer? Great, thank you. Um, some of them are that simple. Some will wanna talk for 10 minutes to figure out exactly where you're gonna be and when you're gonna be there and what path you're gonna come on from. So um, just be a little bit flexible and try and meet whatever needs the landowner has to get access to their area. Um, many of you haven't received in-person training on this. So if you have any questions at all, please, please get a hold of me. Um, I will be happy to answer any questions and make sure that you have a good field season. Thanks. All right, this is how you will pick your sites. This is the rough layout of sites that we have. Um, it's been a little bit of changing over the years, but this generally holds true. So if you want to participate, again, L, K, E, A um, are really good. A lot of the I's and the G's are uh, accounted for already. So um, if you want to survey, it is helpful if you pick these and are willing to drive a little bit I will try to get everyone uh, sites, but I can't guarantee that um, for any season. If you're out west as of 2023, this is where we currently have help. Um, I would love to fill in some of these other boxes as we go along. Please get a hold of me and we will try to fill these in each year. Um, volunteer time reporting. Um, these are kind of our three main activities. Um, along with submitting data, we have our activity name, date, hours that you spent doing that thing, and miles driven. You get credit for the miles that uh, you get credit for the hours that you are driving. I get paid to drive. You get credit for driving. Um, so please record all of these and sign these and send them in at the end of the season. Survey tips before you go. Um, practice is really great. You guys have all done this for a year, but it still probably wouldn't hurt, especially if you've done one or two surveys last year to just try it again um, in a park somewhere. 
Um, check your weather before you go. Know your route before you start. If you get to a place and it doesn't look like how you thought it was going to, double and triple check that. Um, we want you to be going where you thought you were going to go. Um, do put some prep work into knowing that route before you start. Uh, good field clothes. Binoculars can be helpful if you're good with binoculars. Um, water and snacks is always great. You want your phone to at least be charged, if not have a car charger. Clipboard is super handy in the field. Again, I use mine just across fence a lot of the time, um, but writing on just paper is bad. Uh, tell somebody when and where you're going. The buddy system is great. And take your supplemental material with you. I have uh, went through a lot of trouble to make those supplemental materials as informative as possible. Um, so please have that with you in the field. While you're in the field, when in doubt, uh, write it in the notes. Over explaining is good. Bring your water phone, clipboard, and supplemental materials. Um, probably should include data sheet on there. You're going to need that. Um, you can call me if you need to. Please check the protocols first. Um, but if you have a question that needs answered now, this is my office number. You can also text me. You will get my cell phone, but I don't really want that on YouTube, so I'm not going to say it here. Um, but this does get forwarded to my cell, um, so you can call me anytime uh, you're in the field, even on holidays or weekends. I uh, am here for you guys. Double check your data sheets before you leave the site, um, especially the Monarch Regal and Milkweed scene at the very bottom. Don't guess if you didn't write it down. A blank line is better than an incorrect observation. And then uh, take pictures, especially of you. Um, I'm horrible at taking pictures in the field. And you probably noticed that there weren't many pictures of like the survey happening in this presentation. Um, I would love some pictures. So if you go out with somebody and they're willing to take a picture or two of you, I would love to see them. We now have listservs that you are a part of. Um, Nebraska Monarch and Regal Fritillary participants um, and Nebraska Monarch and Regal Fritillary survey training information. Um, you will be in both of these groups because you are participants and um, we don't clear this one out. This, uh, you have to leave it on your own. We just keep adding people to it. Do use nebraska.butterflysurvey.gov. Um, you will get quite a few emails from me from here. This is where I will send you your site assignments. This is where uh, you will send me data. Uh, there was a Gmail that was used. It is gone now. Please do not use it. Um, if I send you an email through butterfly survey at nebraska.gov, um, please respond to that email. Don't make a new one if at all possible. Uh, I get a lot of email threads going at once, and it just makes my life so much easier to have our whole conversation in one place. Tips for after, we're going to submit data to um, that same email. Adobe Scan is a good app that you can send in without a real scanner. Um, if you have to, you can mail it to me. I would much rather that you send it in. Um, I, I would love data sheets as PDFs. I didn't write that down. Data sheets as PDFs make my life so much easier. Pictures of plants can are more than welcome to come in as pictures, but data sheets as PDFs, so much better. Do not forget your pictures of plants. Make sure they're labeled so I know which line they correspond to. Please keep all of your data for at least a year. We just finished up data entry uh, a couple weeks ago before this. Um, data entry takes a while, and sometimes people forget to turn it in. So please turn it in. Oops, where are we at? Too much scrolling. Here we go. Lessons learned in the past. Uh, name and number of transects exactly. Incorrect really tampers data entry and evaluation. Um, I need the full name and the full number. Submit your data as soon as you're done with a set of transects. Uh, do not use, if you don't use the points I give you, record your start and end points with uh, either my GPS coordinates or Google Maps and write that on your sheet. Decimal degrees, a single decimal, um, not decimal minute seconds. Uh, check your pictures in the field. We're still getting blurry pictures. Um, we would love to avoid that. Um, 
Do not follow the path that is laid out for you by your phone. You want to go from one point to the other point the shortest way possible. Um, if you have to go more than five meters around an obstacle, obstacle in the middle of your uh, transect, we're going to either cut it short or um, exclude that transect. Uh, you can go back to the previous training on that if you have questions there. Post-training checklist, you got to do the Google form. Um, it should be in the uh, description of this video. Um, if you are still interested and you want to survey, I don't know that unless you fill out that form, please do so. Um, pick up training materials from uh, the sites, uh, distance estimation sites. If you need other things than those sites, uh, let me know. Complete your distance estimation within two weeks of each survey. Uh, confirm your sites with me, double check to make sure that you can still do them. Stay safe, have fun, and survey. Survey again approximately one month from your first survey. Uh, you do need to complete your estimation training within two weeks of that second set of surveys. So um, you'll, you will practice estimating at least twice this summer. And then all the data comes to me, Nebraska, ngbc.butterflysurvey at nebraska.gov. You can do 100, and if you don't send it in, I won't know. After the season ends, I'll reach out, confirm the number of surveys you did. Uh, please check this. Uh, we catch mistakes each year. This is a very important step. So um, I try and highlight that this is very important in that email, but please check it. Um, we will likely have data entry opportunities, and I will reach out again next year. Okay, 40 seconds. Go. We have regals. We have monarchs. We have viceroys. We're not caring about them this summer. Uh, we're going to estimate distances. I'm going to assign you points. You're going to walk them. We're looking for butterflies along the transect. We're not looking backward. We're looking for species, sex, behavior, uh, nectaring, distance, and angle. We've got our five habitat and vegetation plots. Um, all the while, we are looking for milkweed and regals and monarchs. Thank you. Do we have any final questions, Sarah? Last year, a transect was continuous, eight-foot-tall cattails. Couldn't walk through them, couldn't go over them. What do we do? Um, I said, you might cut it short, and she said it was the entire transect. So it sounds like it might be excluded, but I wanted you to address that to the whole group. Yeah, if if we can't see, if you can't see reasonably well, um, if you've got your head down, um, tripping on trees, trying to wiggle through extremely dense vegetation, um, we are going to exclude that going forward. So um, there are a few sites that we have pushed through in the past that, that um, are just unreasonable to do. Um, I was a little zealous early on during this and probably didn't exclude some that probably deserve to be excluded. So um, do make an effort to get through them. But if it's truly this much visibility, that's not that's not a good survey to be doing. And to clarify, that would just mean you would still like write down on the form that you started it, but maybe like a huge X through it. And then in the notes say that it was an excluded site. Yes, yep. Uh, you can write big old exclude on it, circle it where it says exclude. Um, yeah, it's even like gently cross out the site name or write exclude up top on it as well. We start to enter some of those and then realize they're exclude sites later down the line, which is kind of annoying, but um, yes. Could we move a reasonable transect over and just displace from the original transect line? No, we do not have any protocols to do that. Um, I kind of wish we could, but also that gets into a little bit of a headache with the stats, so we're just not dealing with it. Um, it's either uh, fully walkable or we will cut it short or we will exclude it. And you can start at either the start or the end point. Start or end point. I don't, they're just labels on, uh, on my thing. It doesn't matter where you start, um, so long as it is one of those two points. 
Um, if you start at the end, uh, we're going to write reversed. We'll circle uh, given reversed. Um, but other than that, I don't I don't care where you start. Either is best, whichever is best for you. Thank you all for watching this video. Um, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, help us survey for monarchs and regal fritillaries. Um, please do fill out that Google form in the description down below. Um, and I hope you have a good time surveying. Thank you.